I think uh, we are going to discuss much about why uh, you need to identify the ramp and what is exactly the significance. So now the concept has changed like medial meniscus is no longer a medial meniscus, so more of a posterior medial meniscus complex or anatomy. So if you see this is the posterior of the medial meniscus, this is the capsular arm of semimembranosus. It has got two parts, the, this is the menisco capsular ligament and you got a menisco tibial ligament. So ramp is basically nothing, if you got a, this is uh, illustration basically. This, so this is the posterior capsule, this is the menisco capsular ligament and the menisco tibial ligament. Ramp is anything which is rupture of either a menisco capsular ligament or a menisco tibial ligament or even the periphery of the meniscus that is absolutely classified into a, a meniscus ramp lesion. So as per the definition, it is a peripheral capsular detachment of the portion of the medial meniscus at menisco capsular junction or at menisco tibial ligament. It is often missed on MRI, so that's why it is called as hidden lesion and it's almost if you do a 10 ACL, at least one or two cases you will see the ramp. So to understand what exactly is causing, you need to understand that semimembrane has got a various attachment, direct arm, anterior arm and the capsular arm. Onto the anterior arm and the direct arm, the attachment of anterior arm is a superficial MCL and the capsular arm is, this is how you see if you see the knee from the back. You see the capsular arm of meniscus of uh, semimembranous is directly attached to the menisco capsular junction. So what is exactly happening? So this is the capsular arm which is attached to the you know, posterior of the meniscus and there is a loose areolar tissue. You can see this is the loose uh, adipose tissue. So this is a very loose connection. So when, whenever there is a sudden contraction of semimembranous, this leads to the ramp lesion. And this is the video that I have taken from the uh, Santi group. This is available on the YouTube. So there is an anterior tibial translation and there is an internal rotation which leads to LL tear. And why ramp is happening? Because of the, that semimembranous try to contract and reduce the knee. So in the, in the time when it is contracting to reduce the knee, you can see in this illustration, that is the time when the ramp lesion is ex exactly happening. So that's why pivot is involved with the ramp because after the pivot injury to reduce the knee semimembranous contract and that leads to the ramp lesion. So once you understand the mechanics, then only you will be able to judge how to do uh, repair. So it leads to increased rotational instability and excessive translation and it leads to increased graft failure rate. So that's why a ramp which is unstable needs to repair. It has got a very high incidence ranging of 15 to 30 percent. And there are certain risk factors as well which leads to uh, particularly the bone contagion at postromedial tibia. So in MRI, you can see very well there is a, this is the ramp, uh, this is the menisco capsular, this is the menisco tibial ligament and this is the posterior capsule. So there is a irregular fluid signal intensity which will and posterior medial tibial contusion which will give you the idea that there is a ramp lesion. So to identify the ramp lesion you can see I am doing a diagnostic arthroscopy from anterolateral portal. My probe is coming from anteromedial portal. You see everything looks absolutely normal. The top of the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus. But once you enter into the posterior medial compartment then you will realize that patient has got a huge ramp. So if you leave this ramp unattended then patient is going to have a high chances of ACL graft failure. So how to enter into the posterior medial compartment? You have to go for a Gilkius maneuver. Now we have described a new maneuver which we are going to publish soon. So you have to just go to the posterior medial uh, corner between the triangle between the MFC and the PCL and just do a slight internal rotation. This is the classical Gilkius maneuver. Then what you need to do? You need to put do a needle test. So once you go inside the joint, there is a transillumination circle which was shown in the live surgery in the morning. Put a needle to identify whether the ramp which is there to check for the menisco capsular disintegration. You can see everything looks normal. Another patient looks normal, but until unless you do this probe test or a needle test, then you will realize that patient has got a ramp lesion. If you don't do the needle test, you, if you do just observation, then you will not understand whether the patient has got a ramp lesion or not. To the extent that we are able to see the menisco tibial ligament and the, and the, in this uh, picture very well. So that's, that's what the ramp has been classified into a menisco capsular tear or a menisco tibial uh, ligament tear. So if it's a menisco tibial ligament, you can see it's an inferior surface which is torn, which is now classically termed as a belt lesion. So in the belt lesion, what you need to do? You need to do inferior repair, which can be done very well with the all inside devices. For rest of the thing, the devices, uh, I will show the use of a scorpion, what uh, Dr. Nagarajan showed is an extension to the use of knee scorpion. So this is how the classification of the thinnet which has been described into various types. So classically if you classify it can be simply classified into unstable and, uh, and a stable type. So if you don't repair this, this kind of a ramp lesion in case there is white displacement. So on the flexion and extension if you do just ACL reconstruction and you don't do anything with the flexion and extension with the semi is going to contract and this ramp is never going to heal. 
so this every time it is going to move so we want to just check whether this is a stable ramp or an unstable ramp so if it's a stable ramp definitely you can leave it alone for unstable ramp you require a repair whatever method you choose to so for a simple ramp you can simply you uh, arthex got a wonderful this uh, ramp lasso so this ramp lasso is preloaded with a 20 fiber wire this is a single portal technique i'm using a passport cannula and i'm looking from the anterolateral portal i am into the posterior compartment you just take a ramp lasso take a bite from the capsule so the ramp lasso has been designed in such a way the curvature is such a good that you can take in a single uh, time you can take a bite both from the capsule as from the meniscus now it's already preloaded with the fiber wire you can just relay the fiber wire take alternate half stitches cut it and rest of the ramp lasso you can use for the further sutures because it's loaded with a very long uh, fiber wire you can see i am using the same ramp lasso i am taking a bite again i am doing a passage and doing alternate half stitches so this is good if the tear is more on the lateral side and the size of the ramp is uh, relatively smaller but there are certain disadvantage particularly if you see in this kind if you see that uh, we have done a good repair with the fiber wire but now we started checking from the high posterior middle portal we still feel that the ramp lesion what we have done is inadequate so from the low posterior middle portal we are passing the same ramp lasso the suture lasso and uh, putting the alternating half uh, half stitches so in all cases the ramp where we feel that the lesion is really large we have started doing a two portal technique which has been described as a no implant technique because you don't need to do all inside technique in such cases so again coming to the posterior middle compartment you can see you feel that the ramp is not that big but once you make a low posterior middle portal do some some gentle rasping make a high posterior middle portal put a passport cannula and high posterior middle put a switching stick shift to the high posterior middle portal from low posterior middle portal you can see this is a real huge ramp and this is the real use of scorpion you can take a bite of the scorpion through whole of the full thickness of the meniscus and here lies the capsule so not only you are taking the bite from the capsule but once you are taking the full thickness a uh, part of a mtl is also coming so now what you need to do you don't need to tie it otherwise you will not be able to do a further passage of the scorpion you will park it into the anterolateral portal now once it is parked you will take a scorpion again so it's difficult to pass the scorpion but you just do a gentle flexion then you see whole of the meniscus is going to move posteriorly and the, your low posterior middle portal should be in the line with the meniscus if you are not in the line of the meniscus very difficult to pass the scorpion you can use the same technique and you can use a suture lasso but a scorpion is relatively is a, is a simple and a very fast technique so you see i have done the all the passage of the three sutures and still i have not done the tying now i will start tying from medial to lateral or the lateral to medial depending on the comfort level i will just uh, keep on taking the park suture and i will uh, do a tying so it's a two posterior middle technique high and low and what we are doing is a pass park and tie technique then slowly i realize what we do is uh, in skin suturing we do a continuous suturing so continuous suturing will give you a water tight closer and the chances of healing will be better so we have, we have modified and we have published in the ajsm is a shoeless technique so in, in in this technique you can see that again i am using the first thread i am using a single fiber wire so with a single fiber wire i am, I am able to do whole of the ramp repair then i am passing to the capsular side then the first suture that i have taken from the meniscus will now go through the capsular side the first one which is taken to the capsule will go to the meniscal side then i will keep on alternating passing the suture from the meniscus and from the capsule so there are chances that uh, there may be entanglement of the suture if it's such there you can park it very well in the anterolateral portal and then you can do the passage once you once you just pull it you can see it looks like a shoe lace and you to just simply do a alternate half which is untied so it's a very simple technique again i mean uh, with a single fiber you are able to do justice with uh, without putting any implant particularly for the large ramp tear so the ramp are basically the lesion which are on to the posterior middle side and uh, you need to do a good probing in almost in all cases always go into the posterior middle compartment whether acl is torn or not you have to go to the posterior middle compartment this is how you are going to learn how to do a, a needle test and uh, then depending on your choice of the fixation you can if it's a ramp is unstable you can go ahead and very well fix it i just want to show one more uh, uh, this thing so typically if you see on the lateral side so lateral side is not the ramp the lateral side is a more of a zip lesion so these are the zip lesion again we have classified the zip lesion because this please zip lesion are visible once you are into the posterior lateral compartment so it is equivalent of ramp onto the lateral side so for that you to enter into the anteromedial portal so from the anteromedial portal 
if you go below the ACL and the uh, femoral condyle, you will be able to see this kind of a lesion which has been termed as a zip lesion. And once we started from last one and a half year routinely going into the intromedial portal and looking for the postural compartment and the meniscus cap capsule, we have seen that incidence is close to around 8% and we were able to classify such lesion. So you see now I am going into the intromedial portal. And once you enter into the postural compartment, you can see like equivalent to the ramp, this is a huge zip lesion which is extending up to, up to the popliteus tendon. It's very difficult to repair. So one technique that Dr. Nagaraj has shown, you can use a scorpion from the front or you can use a shoulder scorpion because knee scorpion is difficult to negotiate or you can use a passport carinella from the postural capsule and the same uh, suture lasso technique. So with the suture lasso like a ramp lasso. You can take a bite from the meniscus and from the capsule and you can just put the alternate half inches. So this is a zip which is equivalent of the ramp on the medial side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sheetal.